Hello and welcome to part two of my review of the new Imperial Guard Codex. Uh, today we're going to be going through the entire HQ section and I'm going to be giving you my thoughts on all the crazy shenanigans that are in this section of the Codex. Um, update on my previous video that I uploaded yesterday. Uh, one of my subscribers, at least I think he's a subscriber, um, commented and said that the precision shot order, take aim, um, the way it's written implies that you just get a precision shot, it doesn't have to be on a 6. Now I was thinking, you know, in the, the rule book it says precision shot is on a 6, so they're getting precision shot, you know, it's like a sniper rifle where they hit on a 6. And then he then, I think, corrected me and said, well, precision shot doesn't say that, it says you allocate the wounds and snipers, uh, it says they have sniper, not precision shot, and it, it's, it's all very confusing, and I think Games Workshop haven't made it particularly clear. Um, I was actually reading online, there's forums, you know, with people discussing this. There's, a, I think there's a pretty wide debate. So, I, I don't know is the answer. I could well be wrong on that. Um, I just thought I'd cover myself by saying I, I'm not sure. So, comment below and let me know what you think. Do you think that take aim order, uh, do you think that would apply to just all of your, you know, hits? Or do you think, like me, it would be on sixes? You know, I'm totally willing to admit I could be wrong on that. I just thought I'd throw it out to, you know, all of my subscribers to weigh in and... See what you have to say. Anyway, let's get into reviewing the HQ section. Uh, let's jump in, shall we? Uh, okay, so we'll start with Commissar Yarrick. Um, so, in its most crudest forms, he got better. <laughs> he got a lot better. Which, obviously, um, I, I love Yarrick. You know, it's my friggin' little picture on YouTube. Um, I... Yarrick is one of the major reasons I started playing Imperial Guard, you know, I sat down and I was like, oh, you know, I really love the model. I think Yarrick might even be the first Imperial Guard model I ever bought, you know, I absolutely friggin' love the fluff behind Yarrick. And he got better. So, first of all, he dropped 40 points. Was 185, now 145. Awesome. Not only did he drop points, he got better. <laughs> so, um, let's see. First of all, first way he got better, um, before he had a force field protecting him, uh, which meant that you had to re-roll wounds against him, but he didn't have an invulnerable save. Now he has a four-up invulnerable save. Amazing. <laughs> so happy about that, but that's, that's going to stop, you know, um, before if you were firing something like a las cannon at him, it's like, okay, re-roll your roll of a two, and it's just like, it's not very likely it's n anything's going to happen. Whereas now he's a four-up invul, and that's so cool. Um, his bay wire stayed the same, still a hot shot las pistol, you can fire in, in addition to something else, that's cool. Um, he got a warlord trait, and it's the one which means that uh, units within 24 of him, uh, not 24, 12 of him don't have to take morale checks for losing, you know, 25% of their models or more. Cool, good, good warlord trait, like I said, I like that one. Uh, war gear essentially stayed the same. Um, Aura of Discipline got a little bit worse, um, because Aura of Discipline now means that uh, units around him can use his leadership for morale checks, which was the same. However, in the old codex, it said that it could be done for orders. So my strategy of sticking Yarrick in the middle of a gun line and, you know, heavy weapons teams using his leadership of 10 to have orders, uh, that's now not viable, because they got rid of that. However, 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 however... They gave him senior officer and voice of command. So Yarrick can now issue orders, which is amazing. Because what that means is, because I'm going to have a company commander and Yarrick, I'm going to have four senior officers, um, or two senior officers, issuing four orders a turn. So what I lack in that leadership, you know, I can just issue more orders to compensate, which is awesome. Um, independent character, eternal warrior, same as before. Um, summary execution, he now gained that. Um, I should talk a little bit about summary execution. Um, I never really field commissars, which is weird. The only commissar I field is normally Yarrick, and he didn't actually have summary execution. But um, I think I believe I know how it works, which was in the last codex, you fail morale check, you can then cap one of your guys in the head and re-roll it. Now that's a little bit different, I think. Someone please correct me if I'm wrong, but you choose to cap someone in the head, and then you roll off on it, and it's like on a... Uh, a one or a two your opponent chooses then a three up you choose or something like that um, so that's a little bit different but the point is Yarrick now has that which is cool because he didn't have that before he also now has preferred enemy orcs 
which makes sense. I don't understand why he didn't have that in the old Codex. In the old Codex, he had something a bit different, which was when you um, charged with him, uh, you got to re-roll all your rolls to hit um, and your unit, which, you know, was good, but it didn't really make a lot of sense. I just don't understand why he didn't just give him preferred and re -orgs. Now they have. Awesome. And then last of all, Iron Will stayed the same, which is, you know, you play him on his side when he dies, and you roll the three up, and you get back up. So, yeah, got better. Um, the fact he can issue orders makes him a lot more viable. Um, the fact he has a four up invulnerable save makes him a lot better. And the fact he's cheaper is just crazy. So he got better and cheaper. So, awesome, awesome stuff there. And like I say, for a lot of you who, I don't think many people feel Garrick. So a lot of you are probably, you know, not too fussed about that. For me, he actually does feel Yarrick. Brilliant. So, now I move on to Company Command Squad. Now, a Company Command Squad is sort of like uh, the Imperial Guard's sort of go-to um, HQ. I see them being fielded all the time. And, yeah, still good. Still good. Still viable. Um, there's so many options that you can do with your company command squad that please forgive me if I don't talk about every aspect of uh, the company command squad because, you know, um, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm only human and there's a lot to talk about. So, the first thing to acknowledge is they got a bit more expensive. However, 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 um, your regimental advisors all dropped in price. So if you took one of those, as you know, I always take Master of Ordnance. Um, I've done a video on him before. It stayed the same. So, you know, we went up to 60 points, but Master of Ordnance dropped to 20, so I'm taking Master of Ordnance. I've already counteracted that. Um, then in terms of, you know, equipment, es essentially the shame. A, f a few little changes in the equipment rules, which I won't go into. But, um, yeah, the company command squad, you know, if you take a regimental, regimental advisor, say the same. You know, you've got the veterans in there. Um, it just... Um, I think most people are using them to sit there and bark out orders, and as I did in the last video, orders are really good. Um, I'm not really sure what else there is to say. Yeah? If anyone's got any more questions about Company Command Squad, please comment below, but all I really have to say is, still good. You know, a little bit more expensive, but balances out, and yeah, not, not much else to say there. So, then we get on to these special characters. And uh, first of all, we have Creed and Kel. And yeah, that I'm not sure how often you're going to be seeing them on the field, um, unless you're you know a really big fan of just the model and the fluff. Which why wouldn't you be? That's all awesome. But yeah, they're, they're actually really good. Um, you know, Creed gets two warlord traits. He can issue extra orders. He has a longer radius. So it's pretty much think of Creed and Cal as just taking a company command squad, but like a company command squad even better than what it was. And the company command squad was good as it is, and they make them better. So yeah, they're both. <laughs> Very, very viable options, you know. Um, pretty much everything in this section is decent, you know. Um, so, yeah, uh, t I personally have never fooded Creed and Kel, but, um, yeah, they have some cool special rules. They have cool fluff. Um, if you want to field them, go ahead. That's, again, not much to say, but that's all I have to say there. Now I get on to Iron Hand Strachan, who is frigging cool as hell. Um, so... Again, company command. He's like an upgrade for your command squad. I personally wouldn't take him because I'm a, you know, Acadian player, not a, a Katachan. But he's got some cool stuff. Um, I talked in the last video about how the relentless warlord trait. I don't think it's that useful. He actually has that as his warlord trait. So his he and his unit are relentless. Which, seeing as you know you're going to get that, makes it a lot better because obviously you're going to be using Strachan in a very aggressive way. Um, it he. You know, so stick him in a big squad, charge him around the field. He's got some cool stuff. He's got strength six. You know, his weapon's AP two. He's got um, a good amount of attacks, good leadership. He's got free up save, which is awesome. His weapon skill five. Um, all of this stuff is really good. Um, he carries a plasma pistol, which is awesome. Um, he has a refractor field. Refractor field's got better now. Five up save. Um, you know, he's he got the smash battle rule, so he can increase his strength to 10, uh, but, you know, half his ca attack characteristic. He can issue orders, you know, kind of Iron Hand Strachan is a beast. I, you know, uh, like I said, I wouldn't field him just because of fluff purposes, because I'm a Cadian player, but, you know, still viable, still really good. Um, like I said, I, I've never fielded him before, so I don't know how much better he got, but, you know, good. Uh, then we move on to the... Uh, the Ogryn bodyguard, uh, <laughs> Nork Didok. <laughs> what 
why would you not field him with a name that awesome and the fluff behind him so awesome? Um, you know, 85 points for um, what is just another guy in the command squad. I'm not. I'm not sure how. Uh, you know, if you're playing competitively, I wouldn't wouldn't bother. But hey, his name is Nork the Dog. <laughs> Amazing, brilliant, uh, and also his fluff is cool, and Ogrins are pretty cool. So if you want to take him, go ahead. But you know, his special rules are quite fun as well. I think I think he's got that one where um, if he dies, he inflicts uh, you know special uh, inflicts automatic you know d6 hits on a unit. He's got a he's got a special rule called thunderous headbutt. How could you not want that in your army? Um, like I say, 85 points for just one extra bodyguard is, is not great, but it's got some cool rules, and if you want to field him, go ahead. So, next up, we've got Tank Commanders. Oh my god, like, thank you Games Workshop, that's so cool. Um, I'm a big fan of infantry, I'm definitely an infantry man, I like my infantry heavy uh, armies. Uh, however... The fact you can now have a tank commander as your HQ and these ballistic skill four is amazing. So um, yeah, <laughs> this now means you can pretty much have like an all vehicle based list. So take a tank commander as your HQ, stick him in a squadron. He's ballistic skill four, but he can fire at a different target to the rest of the squadron. Max out your heavy support with tanks. And then take like two squads of vets, which you stick in vendettas or something. Well, no, you can't stick in vendettas now. Stick in Valkyries, uh, let's say. And you've got just this wall of steel and tanks heading up the board. Personally, I wouldn't do that because I just, you know, I love infantry. I'm, you know, I prefer infantry to tanks. But the fact you can do that is just amazing. Like, I love the fact you've got the option. Um, so let's go through. Um, you can issue orders. Um, so let's talk about them. Uh, so first of all. He's got, um, so he doesn't have a leadership, but to issue an order, they're basically saying he's leadership 9, because you roll a you know 2d6, and if it's 9 or less, the tank order immediately takes effect. So it's like having a leadership 9 dude, which is cool. So full throttle, uh, the tank commander's unit immediately moves flat out, moving up to uh, 6 plus, and then d6, even though they are heavy. So that's sort of like having Lumbering Behemoth, which I'm disappointed didn't make it into this codex. But um, uh, for anyone not aware, the Lehman Rust is a heavy tank, and what that means is you can only move six. You can't move, uh, you know, cruising speed and stuff. You have to move six. So that means they they um, can move a bit quicker. Cool, good option. Nice, like it. Uh, gunners kill on sight. The tank commander's unit immediately makes a shooting attack. The tank commander must shoot at a different target to the rest of the unit. Yeah, this is what I was talking about before. So, you know, your um, tank commander can, you know, pretty much split fire and fire off on something else. Which is cool, because, supposing your unit, you give him the uh, Punisher Cannon, and you take two Demolishers with him, you might want to fire a different target. You might want the Demolishers to fire at Devastators while he fires at a big blob of Guardsmen or something. And that means you can now do that. That's, that's really cool. Um, and then, the last of all... Yeah, uh, the tank commander's unit uh, must make a shooting attack after the shooting attack has been resolved. All vehicles in the unit that's not ridden to must use their smoke launchers. So they can then fire, then pop smoke and get the cover safe. Awesome. <laughs> uh, I think the best thing about the tank commander is just the fact that he's an HQ choice, he's a vehicle, and he's ballistic skill 4. Like, great. <laughs> uh, also, if you want, you could upgrade uh, the tank commander to knight commander uh, Pask. Who kind of reminds me, he's, I think he's maybe based on sort of Rommel, you know, the desert general in the Second World War. Um, cool model, you know, if you get like the little tank case thing. And essentially he's exactly the same, he's just like a little upgrade. So he gives you, you know, um, crack shot and, you know, old grudges, which, you know, it's stuff to do with penetration rolls, he's just a bit better for that. So if you're going to take, say, a... Um, I'm trying to think of, uh, you know, a variety of rust that is sort of geared up for, you know, you know, heavy one sort of, uh, is it the Vanquisher, I'm thinking? Uh, the one that the one he used to sort of pop vehicles. Take Pask with that and he's going to get some cool stuff, you know, rolling off against tanks. Um, I, th I think 
Husk is less viable just because the main reason people took him was because he had Ballistic Skill 4 and not all tank him on that have Ballistic Skill 4. But yeah, really, really cool. Um, big fan of that. I probably won't be taking any Edium and Rust tank commanders, but the fact you can do it is just awesome. So next up, Lord Commissar. And Lord Commissar dropped 5 points. He's now 65. Uh, pretty much what I said for Yarrick applies here because he's um, Yarrick is like the character version of Lord Commissar. You know how I was saying how like Creed and Kel and Strachan are like company commanders only extra. You know they give you a bit more. Uh, what I was saying about Yarrick applies only a bit less to the Lord Commissar. So Aura of Discipline, like I said, using le uh, leadership doesn't apply to uh, doesn't apply to. Um, orders anymore, which is unfortunate, but still good. He's an independent character, he can execute people, as I said before, you know, you roll off and you can get to choose who gets executed, or your opponent can. Um, still good, still a good way to, you know, keep morale. He's stubborn, always nice. Um, and he can issue orders, chain of command, awesome. Um, in terms of equipment, you know, pretty much what you'd expect there. Crack grenades pretty much got given, to, you know, across the board to stuff, which we didn't have before. So you can take crack grenades, which is amazing. Uh, also frag grenades we're getting across the board, which is really cool. Refractor field got better, it's now on a 5 up. Um, yeah, not much to say. Go take it. it. I really, one thing I don't like about all these codexes, I noticed in Codex Tyranids, um, you go, maybe it just means I have to get used to it. You go to your Lord Commissar, and you want to see what you want to equip him with, and it says, may take melee weapons, special issue weapons, and heirlooms of conquest. So you have to flick back, and then read through, and then check out what the price is, then flick back, and then flick... Uh, I'd prefer it if in the old codex, where it just lists the options they can take, and then you can just go, okay, I'll take that, and that, you know. A minor gripe. Commissars, um, I believe Commissars got cheaper. Let me just check that. Sorry, I've got the, um, the old codex sitting next to me. Uh, let's see. It should in the old one. It said uh, you go to a uh, a squad, and they would say maybe joined by a commissar, and that's where it would say. I'm just trying to find that. Bear with me for a second, guys. No, I can't seem to find that for some reason. Anyway, uh, Commissar is now 25 points. Um, like I said, I couldn't find them in the old codex when I just had a brief flick through. But I believe they were 30, so that's cool. They got cheaper. And yeah, stubbory, um, Stubborn and Summary Execution. Uh, also Leadership 9. So stick them in with, uh, with your uh, big blob of guardsmen. And they're definitely stiff in the ranks by making them Leadership 9 instead of 8. Because the sergeant's Leadership 8. And also give you the chance to fail reroll morale. Cool. Also Stubborn. So no pesky, you know, getting charged, losing two guys in a combat, and then failing on, you know, leadership six or something. Yeah, great. Um, Commissar is still really cool. I don't know why I never end up taking them. I think it's because I struggle with the points. Uh, perhaps the fact they're now 25 points um, makes them better. I, I don't know. Uh, we'll have to see. So, moving on. Now we get into some really, really cool stuff. So, priests. Um... I've seen a lot of people, like, really positive about the priests, saying, oh, yeah, definitely going to have to get some priests now. I, I don't see it, guys. I'm really not, not not that big a fan. 25 points. Can't go wrong for that. That's really good. But then if you look at what they actually do, you want to be sticking them in a big, you know, um, squad of guardsmen. And... Um, then they have Zealot, and what Zealot means is it gives them Hatred. Um, I think it gives them something else, I can't quite remember, but Hatred means you get to re-roll your rolls to hit in combat. Um, also, in the War Hymns, I won't bother to read through them all, but there's stuff like you can re-roll your armor saves in combat, um, and they're all to do with combat, you know. Um, in fact, I, I will check them out, because it's kind of annoying that I can't even remember that one, just to uh, clarify that. So I'm just uh, flipping them up. Where are you, priests? Yeah, so, um... Yeah, they have the... Sm uh, then he gets the smash special rule, which means he's AP2, and he can double his uh, strength to 6, which is fine. It's, it's still good, but... And then, uh... The priest can re-roll uh, rolls to wound until the end of the phase, but, um... 
But yeah, again, all it, all of this is in combat. So, although all of that stuff is good, because, you know, you can take a blob of, you know, um, 50 guardsmen and you can make them, you know, uh, re-roll their rolls to wound in combat and then re-roll their rolls to hit and stuff. That's all good, but personally, I, I always feel this way about when people start um, trying to make units um, more sort of, you know, Imperial Guardians is better in combat. Combat isn't our strength. Our strength is our vehicles and our shooting. So if you're taking stuff that makes us better in combat, it's like trying to make something bad, like, all right in combat. Um, if it's like, like my, the other army I play is Blood Angels. Blood Angels are good in combat, so if you take something that gives us a bonus in combat, it's like a nice buff. Whereas uh, doing stuff like this, it always make, feels like you're trying to make something like Guardsmen, which are crap in combat, legit in combat, whereas you could just concentrate on making them better at um, better at shooting. So, I, I don't know. Um, maybe time will tell on that. Um, I should just have a little disclaimer here. I've, you know, I haven't playtested any of this stuff, so I could be wrong on things. Um, I could make mistakes. As we saw when I was talking about Take Aim, uh, you know, it's very possible I've got that wrong. So, um, if you disagree with me, that's really cool. Let me know why you think the priest is good, because I have heard a lot of people, uh, you know, um, I really respect their opinions on say they want to get the priest, but I personally don't see it. Next up, Primaris Psyker. Jesus Christ, this guy became amazing. Um, first of all, before he used to be just an HQ, shot, an HQ slot. Now, for each primary detachment, you can take one to three, and they don't even take up force organization slot. Amazing. Um, then the next thing about them, 50 points, got cheaper, awesome. And then the best thing about them is they now have access to divination, if you're not aware, the Primaris power on divination means you get to re-roll all of your rolls to hit in, you know, shooting and that. Uh, which is insane! Because now you can imagine it, stick him in a blob squad and you've got 50 conscripts. Uh, you know, first of all that stiffens them to leadership 9, which is great, because he, you know, he'd be leadership 9. Then issue, um, oh, I can't remember what it's called, but you know, the Primaris power for divination. And then they're re-rolling all of their, you know billion shots to hit. Crazy. Um, there was a bit of a debate on my Facebook, you know, I threw it out there, what you guys think of the Primaris Psycho, and people were like, oh, do I stick him with a blob squad? Do I stick him in a command squad? Do I stick him out there? Do I stick him... Doesn't matter. If you read the rules for um, Blessings, because, uh, I, I mean, obviously, if you want to take, you know, he's got access to bi uh, Biomancy, Primarancy, Telekinesis, but, you know, I think the one most people are taking is the Divination and the Primaris Power to get that re-rolls to hit. What that means is it's a blessing. You issue it at the start of your turn, and you can issue it on whoever you like. It doesn't have to be his squad. So, imagine you stick the Primaris Striker just in a unit in the middle of your guard line. It means at the beginning of each turn, you go, uh, let's give them uh, the ability to re-roll. You know, roll it off. And the next time you're like, no, I don't want to give it to them anymore. I want to give it to them roll off, which is great. You don't have to do it to your unit. So don't, I wouldn't be concerned about what unit you're picking him to go in. I'd be more concerned about where that unit is because you want him within 12 inches of all your cool stuff. Um, moreover, it just says you issue it on a unit and a unit is still a vehicle. So, you know, you suppose you've got your Lehman Rust there uh, with your Punisher Cannon. Issue that blessing and that is like effectively twin linking everything on him. That is so cool. So Primaris, Primaris Psycho, really, really, really good. Um, I'm definitely going to be ordering one later today. I'm going to be adding him to the ranks of my guard. Uh, Enseer, um, Engine Seer, if you, however you want to say it. Um, yeah, he's good. He's all right. Um, I saw people like online on forums say, oh, he's so OP now. Everyone's going to be taking Enseers. I don't know. He's all right. Like... Um, uh, like like the tech priest before him, he can repair vehicles, really, really good. Uh, he now has the ability to uh, give power of the machine spirit to stuff, really good. Um, 40 points, doesn't take up a forced organisation slot, yeah, good. The one sort of problem I have with him is um, you need to get him into base contact with vehicles to repair, which is kind of an issue, because suppose you got him on one side of the board repairing one Russ and you need to get to the other side, you, I don't know. Um, Still don't see him being fielded that much. I don't know why people were going crazy about him. Maybe maybe it's something I'm not seeing. Comment below if you think I'm wrong on that. Let me know. Um, but yeah, yeah, he's, he's good. Still does some cool stuff. Can't complain. Not much more to say, really. And that's about it for the, uh, the HQ section. 
Um, so, let me know what you think of the HQs. Comment below and let me know. Um, and like I say, weigh in and let me know your thoughts on... Um, oh, God, what was it called? Uh, precision shot. You know, let me know whether you think I'm right. And, um, yeah. By the way, <laughs> the reason I was talking a little bit slowly there was I was double-checking. A Commissar on the old Kydex was 35 points. Now he's 25. You know, I got there in the end, guys. I got there in the end. So, yeah. Anyway, that's about it for today. I will be next up. We'll be looking at the troop section. Uh, probably my favourite section in the Codex. Uh, I'm probably going to say that every time because I freaking love all the sections. Um, so, yeah, I hope you all have a cracking day. I'll see you real soon with another video. Bye for now.